Hey, visually representing any amount of uncertainty when it comes to vector data can be kind of tough, man. How do you make a map that says, boom, this is where something happened? Kinda, I think, that sort of thing. I'm gonna walk through some tricks for visually representing uncertainty with probably the most challenging geometry type, type which is lines. Lines, points are a little bit easier. You know, I like to use firefly points instead of a you know, discrete symbol. It's like, yeah, this is kind of where it happened. Polygons, it's a little bit easier. You can do some weird fuzzy stuff with the edges, but lines, what do you do with lines? Here are all the tornadoes that have happened in Oklahoma since 1950. Let's look at the symbology for this layer. I mean, right now they're all just these uber confident solid strokes. The most standard way that people show non-confidence or imprecision or uncon, you know, you know what I'm getting at, is through dashes. Here's a dash, boom, now it's a dashed line. I'll zoom in and you can kind of see what I'm looking at. Well, the greater the not ink ratio is the more unconfident something is. A lot of the times fairy things or trails will have a dotted line um, and dashes have a sense of movement. And by the way, you can play with this. So I can say two on, space, two off and it looks like this. So two on, four off, looks like this. Okay, so that is dashes and dots. I mean, dots would just make this even less. Now we have a dotted line, that sort of thing. One to 14, ooh, that's too much. You don't know if you've gone too far until you've fallen over the edge. Now there is a feature here called, I'm gonna add an effect from the structure tab called wave wave yeah wave i'll come back here i'm gonna set this back to straight okay wave we can come here and look at the options for it look at this it's wavy let's see what we got looks like the hem on the old star trek cuffs right a little bit of gilding here woo, woo, woo. this is wavy this might indicate that you know i'm not the most confident that this is where these tornadoes have struck but you know, this is generally where I believe they are, and this is where the data has them. You can play with this. Sine waves, you can make a little uh, here with a square triangle, which would give it a bit of a sawtooth effect. Hello, random, what is that? Random actually is a really good way of showing uncertainty. It's more random, it's jittery, it's unconfident. It's like, uh, I don't know. And that has a connotation of a lack of certainty. We can play with these values. So amplitude is how high the spikes go. Period is how long it is, so wave height, wave length, um, I would call them that. Hit apply, and you can just see the different settings. This is this is roughly where the tornadoes have gone. Earlier I referenced firefly points. You could do something firefly-y with this. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the structure. Yeah, let me just isolate the variables. I'll get rid of the wave effect, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and I'll come back here, and I'm gonna make this lower layer, very semi-transparent color properties. I'll make it 90% transparent and I'm gonna make it thicker. Apply. It's hard to tell, right? It's because I haven't done it enough times. 90% transparent is pretty transparent. So another one, I'll make this one even thicker. Hit apply. I'll come back. Let's do more. Turn it up to 11. Duplicate this one and I'll make this one four points thick. Oh my goodness, things are starting to happen. Go back to the structure, come back down here. I'm gonna duplicate this. Why wow, he's crazy, this man is insane. Yes, it's true. When it comes to uncertainty and making things glow, I am insane. Five point thickness, 90% transparent. You get this additive stacked effect, boom. Now we've got glowing lightsabers of relative you know, confidence. Is it kind of confident? It went here, but to anybody who's ever experienced tornadic weather, there's no such thing as an infinitely precise line of a tornado track. Tornadoes wiggle and their wind speed dissipates at distance. And if you're pretty far away, you're still going to have some effect. So the effect of the tornado carries on at a, at a distance. Tobler's first law of geography. It apply. Now they're even more glowy. You get it. I'm making a glowing thing. And it's all one layer because I'm doing symbol layers. Over here, I'm representing this layer many times over here. So that's like uh, how to do firefly to a line. So we've done dashed, dotted, we've done wavy, we've done firefly. Let's get a little bit crazier now. Let me go back to the structure. I'll just get rid of all these guys and start with a pr pristine single solid layer, apply. And now I'm gonna add a global effect. 
global effect buffer. Now what that means is it's gonna turn every one of these lines in the renderer, it's gonna treat it as a polygon. So I'll hit apply. Now all of a sudden you have these little buffered out polygon, polygonal zones with an outline. Come here, I'm gonna turn off this and my symbol layer doesn't have a fill. So I'm gonna give it a fill because I mean, I just made it a polygon. So instead of a stroke, I'll give it a fill layer. I'll come back here and make this, that, you know, kind of green thing. Now I, if I hit apply, it just looks you know, thicker. But check this out. The global effects, which live over here, I can increase this buffer size. I'll make it like three. Let's see what happens. Okay, now I can come back to this layer and make this, instead of a solid fill, I'll give it a hatched fill. Hatching, you know, little dashes and lines and stuff. Hatched fill. Now we have something that's kind of uncertain. That's interesting. I like that. Let's make this semi-transparent, mm, like 80% transparent. So it's only 20% opaque, 20% visible. I hit apply. And now I'm gonna do a wave effect to my polygons. I'm gonna do a global wave effect after doing the buffer effect. And I'll come here, let me zoom out a little bit. And the wave effect is gonna be random because it's the most random <laughs> looking one. I'm gonna turn up the amplitude, the period, which is the wavelength. See how we get like a little swooshy wow. And then I'll hit apply. Why don't I make this more opaque? John, curse you John and your over real dependence on transparency. Okay, so now we're getting some kind of scratchy zones. And let's say I wanna turn up that sense of randomness. Turn this way up. You know, let's see what happens. Again, you don't know how far, you don't know if you've gone too far until you've gone over. So here we go. A little bit, this is interesting. Okay, go back to my layers. Now I've got a hatched fill. Now the hatched fill is just a solid line. What if we make the hatched fill a dashed line? So we're getting kind of two dimensions of uncertainty. I'll make it green again. And then I'll hit apply. Now I've got a wavy polygon representation with hatched fill using dashed lines. This is pretty uncertain. I'm looking at this going, yeah, man, I, I guess there was a tornado that went through here and it was big and crazy and it kind of wobbled around a little bit. Uncertainty. Okay, check this next level stuff. I'll go back to the structure. I'm gonna duplicate this fill and in the hatched option, I'm just gonna reverse the hatch so it's like an X shape, negative 45. You get this weird kind of scratchiness. So uncertain are you. So there's a whirlwind assort, no pun intended, whirlwind assortment of ways to visualize uncertainty wholesale, just applied to the whole layer. But what if you have like a confidence value associated with each feature? Here's how you can do stuff like that. Okay, let's hastily destroy all of our work and just reset this to regular lines, regular lines. Now we wanna do data-driven uncertainty. Well, I was chatting with Dr. Joseph Kursky and he mentioned tornadoes as being a good example because our confidence in the data is really commensurate with age. Older tornadoes were just based on sighting reports and approximations of the locations. Current data, which is you know radar-driven and very precise and we're very confident about that. So you can use time as a proxy for confidence. So let's do that. Let's just look over here in, in the primary symbology within the primary symbology tab. We'll choose Choose graduated colors. Year is the field, helpfully by default. And the most recent uh, data we have here is 2018, but it goes all the way back here. We can give it whatever whatever color scheme we want. So we'll go back to that nice little green cyan-y kind of color scheme we had and go full opaque green to almost transparent green based on age. More confident, less confident, driven by time. That makes some sense. Okay, so let's reset this and try something else. Um, I liked the, the wiggly waviness to show uncertainty. Let's do that for data driven. Here, if you go into the very symbology by attribute tab, we get a little bit more advanced options. Check this guy out. This checkbox is just amazing. So if I check this, allow symbol property connections, what? Oh yes. What that means is we go back to primary symbology and we dig into this symbol. 
every little element you know associated with how this line looks has a little database thing icon <laughs> next to it which is pure magic we can make all of this driven by attributes or formulas i'll go back to the structure i'll add trusty old wave effect now we have a wave effect I'll come here and as we like to do i'll set that wave form to be random and now for the amplitude and period so wave height and wave length there's a little database icon next to it i'll click this and i can choose one of these attributes but none of these attributes are actually like a perfect fit for uncertainty year is close but i'm going to do a little formula using year really i want age so what that means is i'll just type in the most recent year and then subtract the year attribute and this will approximate age for us i'm going to copy this so i can paste it in the other one too hit okay hit okay and i'll just let's check this out see if we've got anything yes things are happening it's insanity looks like cartoon stitches or something let's do the same thing for the wavelength i'll choose that database icon and open the expression i'll just hit Control v or paste and hit okay okay Alrighty. so now the more wow wow wobbly it is the less confident we are the older it is really wobbly stuff is old frankly this is too wobbly so we can just fine tune this with a little bit of a tweak to the formula let's let's open this up i'll open this expression editor they call it a, an expression and i'm just going to reduce this insanity and make it slightly less insane so and then i'll multiply it by a tenth copy this hit okay okay come down to the wavelength and do the same thing get rid of this paste so it's just age you know times 0 0.1 okay okay there we go. Now we've got something pretty reasonable. The more wavy it is, the older it is, and the less certain we are about its fidelity. But if it's a straight, crisp line, then we're pretty sure about it. And again, age is just a proxy for confidence. The more you know. Bum, 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 bum. Ironically, when I look at this, the big wavy lines are actually calling more attention to themselves. The more recent, more confident values, which are straight, don't quite grab my eyeballs quite as much as these big wavy ones. And that's a little bit backwards. So how can we pull back that transparency thing and, and do transparency and waviness? I'll show you how to do this. I'll go back here and over here in the very symbology by attribute where we found our magical, amazing checkbox here, you can set all sorts of these visual variables at the same time concurrently so i'll choose transparency and in this case year makes sense i'll just say year very transparency by year and more transparent is older stuff i'll make it even more transparent and then less transparent stuff is the new stuff i'll make it you know zero transparent here we go now if it's old and we're less confident about the location it'll be wavy and semi-transparent the new stuff is crisper and more opaque there you go so this is data driven visual indicators of certainty well that's it for me but i hope not for you because i want you to try these out mix them match them use them in all kinds of crazy different ways that i haven't thought of and just